welcome. We are uh, discussing about measurement of resistance and we have said that measurement of low and high value resistance uh, needs special care. For example, we have seen that if the value of a resistance is small, then the contact resistance or the terminal resistance that becomes comparable or significant in comparison to the actual resistance itself. Therefore, uh, we need to take care of how to avoid uh, contact resistance uh, or any problem due to contact resistance or terminal resistance. Today in this uh, video, in this class, uh, we are going to uh, see what are the problems that we may encounter when we are measuring a high resistance. Okay? So, high means very high, it could be several uh, mega ohms or even higher. And uh, a particular example of this uh, is measurement of insulation resistance. Okay. So, insulators means non-conductors, so they ideally should have uh, infinite resistivity or uh, zero conductivity, but nothing is an ideal uh, uh, insulator. So, they have some uh, conductance or they have a very high resistance, but that is not infinite, that is high, but not infinite. Now, suppose I have a block of uh, insulating material. Okay. So, say I have a uh, rectangular block of insulating material which is like this. Okay. Uh, now, what I will do? I will put two conducting plates on uh, two sides of this block. Maybe one conducting plate here So, this is a conducting plate on this side and similarly, we will have another conducting plate on the other side which is here. Okay. So, the let me it is this. Okay. Now, so this is insulator and this is conductor. Maybe copper. Okay, so say this is copper, and this is some insulator. Now what we will do? We will uh, we can connect these two plates to a voltage source like this. a sufficiently high voltage source, uh, otherwise the current I mean uh, almost no current will flow through this insulator, because this is an insulator, but not a perfect insulator. So, if you apply some voltage source through it, then some current will leak through the insulator. Okay? So, there will be some leakage current through this insulator. Now, if uh, say the cross section area of this insulator is A. So, this area cross section area okay. and say this length through which current flows is L. 
okay. And if the insulator has a resistivity of rho, so this is resistivity which should be very high for an insulator, then we know the resistance offered by this block is given by R is equal to rho L by A. Okay. And the current flows through the entire volume of this insulator. Okay. So, the charge or the electrons they flow through the entire volume means if this is the 3 d volume of the insulator then the electrons will flow through it everywhere everywhere through it okay. so sorry this is if it is electron then i should draw it in the other direction minus 2 plus and it flows everywhere inside okay inside the volume okay and so so if you see uh, from this side okay from here if you see from here you will see then this cross section as a square and you can see the electrons moving through the volume everywhere okay it will fill the entire volume and this conduct this 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 uh, con, uh, conductance of the current you can call the volume conductance similarly this resistivity you, we call it volume resistive uh, volume this is volume resistance and this we call the volume resistivity okay so r is said the volume resistance and rho is said the volume resistivity okay so the dimension of rho will be so this dimension will be ohm into surf, uh, say meter square divided by meter okay so its dimension will be ohm meter Now, there is also some current which will flow uh, only through the surface of this insulator. Okay. So, there will be also some current or electrons which will flow only through the surface. Okay. So, that means only uh, how do I draw it? So, uh, just consider this surface. which is the periphery of this uh, block. So, from there we will also have some electrons flowing only through the surface. Okay. So, if you look from here you will see this, this electrons only at the surface okay. only on this line. Okay. So, uh, this particular type of a conductance uh, where current flows only through the surface and not through the volume is called surface conductance and the associated resistance uh, to that we call it surface re uh, re resistance okay so we uh, let let me use a v symbol this is for volume v v v so this is volume resistivity and this is surface uh, sorry uh, volume re resistance and volume uh, resistivity similarly we can define a surface resistance which will be proportional to some constant which we call the surface resistivity multiplied by the same length but divided by the periphery uh, the peripheral length 
of this uh, this block. Okay, so call that uh, call that um, what can I call periphery? Say small p. Okay, where this periphery is this length. From here that up to this, then you go like this, then you go like this, and like this. So this is the periphery p. Okay, and also if you call say this distance as uh, w and this distance as h. Okay, so this is the height. This is the width of the block. Then this p periphery, then p periphery is equal to 2w plus h. Okay. This is the this is what is called the surface resistivity. R s is surface resistivity and rho s is sorry, this is surface resistance and this is surface resistivity. Okay. So, the important difference is that for this phenomena electron flows only through the boundary or the surface of this material and for this phenomena electron flows through the entire volume inside of the material. Now, the physics of these two conductance we are not going to talk about. Uh, so, that is beyond our scope. So, we will only uh, stay happy here by knowing this fact that some current flows through the volume and the resistance offered to that current is called the uh, volume resistance and some current which flows only through the surface only through the surface is uh, associated with what is called the surface resistance and surface resistivity. And the relationship is quite similar here you, we see that uh, this resistance volume resistance is proportional to the length of this block that means how far how long the uh, current should flow it is inversely proportional to how much area or how big how wide the path of the this uh, current is the thicker the bigger the path will, the resistance will be smaller and the proportionality constant is called surface volume resistivity similarly here this resistance is again proportional to the length how long the current has to flow and is inversely proportional to how big the periphery is how uh, how uh, what uh, wide the path of the current is which is this periphery peripheral length okay and the proportionality constant so this is a constant which is called surface resistivity okay now the fact is that uh, normally normally we uh, normally we ignore the surface surface conductivity or surface resistance okay and uh, we assume that this surface resistance is very high I mean as as high as infinite okay nothing is infinite so by this I mean it is very high okay and therefore uh, we generally ignore this okay so if this block was a better conductor then uh, almost the entire current will flow through the volume and very little amount of current will flow through this surface so therefore we ignore this surface conductance but when this itself is an insulator so that only a small amount of current goes through the inside through the volume of this block then 
this surface current is also comparable to the volume current. Okay. But for insulators, since the volume current itself is very small, thus this surface current which is also small, but now it becomes comparable that means, no longer negligible comparable to the volume current. Okay. So, if we want to find out uh, the so, if this voltage is V and if we want to find out how, how much current will flow through this block. Okay. Now, this conductors will have very little resistance, so that you can ignore. So, this current I will now be given by I is equal to uh, let me write it here this I will be equal to V this voltage divided by the resistance offered to this current, but now there are two parallel paths. One path is through the volume, another path is through the surface. Okay. So, here we will have R V parallel R S. Okay. So, we have two paths for the current to flow and the two phenomena is different, but the physical phenomena we will not discuss. We will stay happy uh, with the fact that okay, there are two types of current, one flows through the surface, one through the volume. Okay. So, so, this is what I will highlight. not plus, they are not in series, sorry this is a mistake, they are in parallel. Okay. And if say this R V is much smaller than R S, then this quantity uh, will be equal to I equal to V by R V only, because if R V is much smaller than R S, then this parallel combination will be same as R V only. So, if this is true, then we can write I is equal to V divided by R V only and we can ignore R S. Ignore means we assume it to be very high or infinite, not 0, it is very high okay? so, approximately. So, this is normally what we do, we never talk about R S surface resistance, but here we have to talk about surface resistance because R V itself is very high, itself is very high. So, what we have seen is that while measuring high resistance like insulation resistance, there may be a parallel surface resistance which may if affect the which can uh, uh, affect the um, uh, measurement. Okay, so, this is what we have seen. Okay. Now, let us see a practical scenario or let us take a practical example where uh, uh, this will be more clear. Suppose, we have a coaxial cable. What is a coaxial cable? A coaxial cable uh, looks like this. So, it has uh, a central core, a cylindrical, cylindrical core uh, which which is of course, uh, some metal may be copper. Okay. So, it has a core 
and surrounding this we have a layer of insulator ok. So, surrounding this we will have a layer of insulator like this. and then surrounding this insulator uh, we will have another layer which is again a metal copper aluminum or uh, something ok. So, after that we will have another layer on top of it which is again a conductor. So, this is a conductor, the outer one is a conductor, the inner one this is also conductor and the middle one is insulator, this is insulator. Okay. Although I have I have drawn a uh, small uh, or very short uh, coaxial cable, but this cable uh, in principle can be very very long and this is the cable which is often used for uh, uh, power supply underground power supply in um, many of our houses often ok. So, maybe uh, it is possible that uh, the, this this inner core acts like the like uh, uh, the life phase or uh, or, or say the positive term you can think of the positive terminal of a power supply and the outer one is the ground terminal or the neutral phase. So, this way we, we can uh, have a long very long uh, power carrying coaxial cable. You may have seen some similar coaxial cable in your uh, uh, if you have a uh, cable line or a DTH line or anything uh, uh, your television. So, in your television the cable uh, that carries signal also is a coaxial cable ok, uh, which has a central core and the outer metal sheath and th there is some insulator between this. Now, uh, the insulation between this should be able to separate these two conductors perfectly there should be no leakage current between the inner core and the outer sheath, but no insulator is perfect. So, we may be uh, interested in finding out how good this insulator is that means, we would like to find out the resistance offered by this insulator. So, for that what we will do we will once again connect say this two conductors. So, this one and this one. So, these two are conductors the core and the outer sheath will connect this to a battery and we would like to measure the current that flows in this circuit ok. So, we will put say an ammeter. So, let us put an ammeter ok. So, now if we know this voltage if, if we get some reading I then uh, we may like to find out the R as V by I. So, this is the resistance between this conduct the, this central core and this outer sheath ok. But but if we do in this way we will have a small problem. What is that? Let us see. Before that let us first find out uh, the path of the current that flows ok. So, path of the current. So, current comes from uh, or say electron comes from here it comes here and then it gets distributed all over this orange color 
uh, in the conductor. Okay. So, electrons come here and then these electrons go through the insulator to the central core. Okay. So, the electrons flow like this from this side as well as from this side everywhere. Okay. So, if we see from the front, okay. so the front view, in the front view we, we shall see that uh, this is my insulator, then we have this central core and outside we have this sid. Okay. So, the front this is the front view. So, we shall see electrons flowing like this radially everywhere from the outer sheet to the inner core. Okay. So, this is how the electrons flow. So, this is one path for the electron to flow from here minus terminal to the plus terminal, but there is another path which is uh, which is only through this surface or boundary of this insulator. So, electrons can flow only like this, only through this surface, okay. not through the volume. Okay. So, this is only through the this through this conical okay, uh, part of this uh, insulator okay. and this, 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 this electrons do not flow through the volume of the insulator. So, this is the surface current and this blue one this is the volume current. and these two currents are flowing into parallel paths. right? So, both are starting from this outer sheet and ending uh, at this central core. So, these two currents are parallel okay? and the, these two resistances offered to these two currents we can call them as uh, R V volume resistance and here the, any resistance offered to this we call it as R S. Okay. Okay. Now, we may have actually another surface area open area on the back side of uh, this of this uh, of this this uh, long cable. Okay. We can see only the front side from this drawing, but there is definitely uh, some uh, uh, the, the back side will also have this uh, this open or exposed area of the insulator. So, the, we will also have some uh, surface current there. Okay. So, this is the back side of this uh, insulator. Okay. So, basically we have like R s here and we can think that, okay, there is another R s call this R s uh, 1 and they call this as R s 2. Okay. So, we have R s 1 then R v and R s 2 in parallel. Okay. So, if we draw a side view so, let me try to draw a side view. So, this is the central core, then we have this insulator. So, this is very long, I am drawing it small, but this is actually very long and then another metal okay. and then we have the surface current flowing only here, here, here and here. So, this is the surface current, 
So, this is side view as we are seeing from this and the volume current flows here. So, this is the volume current or uh, current is in the opposite direction, this is the uh, direction of the electrons. Okay. So, volume currents flows everywhere, surface current flows only through the surface. Okay. So, this so these three are in parallel. Now, say we want to know uh, so, so say we have we have Mm, say 1 kilometer long uh, coaxial cable. Okay. So, question. So, you have a 1 kilometer long coaxial cable and uh, we want to know the resistance be resistance between uh, the central core and the outer seed outer conductor for this long cable for this 1 kilometer long cable but suppose uh, we cannot. So, what we have to do to find this answer? We have to perform this experiment. We have to apply some voltage and measure this current. But we cannot do this experiment suppose with a 1 kilometer long cable because that will be a huge arrangement. So, maybe we are doing this experiment with uh, say uh, 10 meter long cable or maybe 1 meter long cable. Okay. So, we we cannot perform the experiment with 1 kilometer long cable. So, we perform uh, with say 10 meter cable. Okay. So, 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 we have this cable 10 meter long. So, we have this 10 meter long cable with this with this insulator and this seed. So, this is 10 meter. Okay, and we are applying a voltage between this and this. Okay, say we have a voltage applied like this, and we are measuring this current with an ammeter. Say this voltage is found to be. Uh, we know this voltage is uh, or we can measure this voltage. So, this is 1 kilo volt and say this current is found to be 1 micro ampere. The length of this conductor is 10 meter. Okay. Now, if we do the same experiment with uh, had we done the same experiment with 1 kilometer long cable okay so this is this is 1 kilometer if we had done the same experiment with this uh, same voltage 1 kV we apply and we measure the current uh, 
ok. So, this current I, so what do you think this current I will be? how much will this current be? Roughly speaking, this I should be, uh, so this is 10 meter, this is 1000 meter, so this is 100 times longer, ok. So, we have 100 times more path for the electrons to flow, here this is the path for the electrons mainly and here we have 100 times longer path. So, definitely I this current I will be expected to be around 100 times this current which is 1 microampere right because now we have more current. So, for this cable therefore, we could have estimated the resistance like as uh, this voltage 1 kV divided by 100 times 1 microampere for this experiment ok. So, with this, this experiment is not performed, this experiment is performed and from this we are trying to guess uh, what would have been the value of this current if we actually had 1 kilometer long cable but this result is not correct. This result is not correct. Why it is not correct? Let us see in detail. So, in this experiment ok, so this with 10 meter cable we the current that we have I this is given by the voltage uh, v. So, this is V divided by the total resistance and the total resistance is the parallel combination of the surface resistance and the volume resistance. Now, this we can write as the surface resistance uh, plus parallel R V for this experiment ok and therefore, Mm, you can also write this as say V uh, multiplied by, so R is resistance, so let me call C for conductance, C s is surface conductance which is same as 1 by R s and C V as, as volume conductance which is 1 by R V ok. So, then this we can write as V multiplied by C S plus C V. This is for this experiment and similarly for this experiment we can write I as once again V multiplied by C S plus C V, but now so, let us call this C V as C V 10, 10 means 10 meter conductance for 10 meter cable and let me call this as C V 1000 ok. So, now we, we can write that this is approximately we can expect that this will be C S plus 100 times C V 10, this is C V 10 this is C V 1000, this will be 100 times uh, of this because now we have 100 times more path for the current to flow ok. So, I will be this and you see this is not equal to, so this is called you call this I 10 and this is I 1000 ok. So, I 10 is 1 microampere and I, I 1000 is this. This quantity you see is not equal to 1000 times I 10 ok, because 
C s is not equal to 0. If C s was 0, if we had uh, if we say erase this C s uh, for if we can forget this uh, C s from here and here, then you see uh, these two currents are like th uh, 100 times of each other not 1000, 100. Okay. So, but because of this C s it will not be uh, this will not be 100 times of this and then this C s you can uh, possibly ex expect to be of same value um, because here also the surface these two surfaces are almost similar to these two surfaces. So, C s here and C s here may be same. Okay. So, we may write C s for 10 meter should be equal to C s for 100 meter, 1000 meter. So, now therefore, if we perform the experiment with a smaller cable, we cannot multiply the current with a factor of 100 and predict the current in this experiment because of this surface conductance or surface current. So, this is the problem. Okay. So, this is the problem due to surface conductance. Now, let us see the solution. So, that was the problem why surface conductance is so crucial to take care Now, let us see the solution how to take care of surface uh, resistance solution how to take care of surface conductance. Okay. So, what we will do we will connect a voltage source between this okay, and we have to measure the current. The solution is very simple actually. So, we have an ammeter. Now, what we will do is this. So, let us take some copper conductor. Okay. What we will do? We will wrap uh, some turns of a conductor uh, touching this insulator. So, some turns like this. Okay. So, and then we will take this turns and connect it like this. So, now what happens? Say this electrons or current which is flowing from here, it comes up to this and then it has two paths, one through the volume, another through the surface. So, the part that goes through this volume will come to the central core and has to then go through this uh, violet color conductor through this ammeter and return. Okay. But the electrons that flow through the surface after reaching halfway through this surface, they will find this conductor which is of much lower resistance than the surface and therefore, these electrons will bypass like this. Okay. So, then they will come through this conductor. So, this is a conductor okay, somewhere. So, these electrons will then bypass through this conductor 
they will not go through the ammeter, they will go directly like this and will return the battery. Okay. Similarly, if you have another exposed surface here, then we need another cable, uh, not cable, conductor, okay, which is twisted surrounding this insulator, touching this insulator in contact with this insulator, but it is not co in contact with this, con uh, this core. Okay, this should not touch the core. It is touching the insulator, but it is not touching the core. Okay, and then also we can have another bypass path from here up. Like this. So, this electrons also which were going like this, they will get bypassed and they will come directly like this. So, this current will not flow through the ammeter. So, the current that will flow through the ammeter is only the volume current which I am calling as I V and the current that will fl uh, by get bypassed okay, is this is this I S surface current. Okay, so, this is I S 1, this is called this I S 2. So, this is the total surface current I S and this current is I which is equal to I V plus I S. Okay. Now, what is I V? So, we can further write it as I V is nothing but V this voltage divided by the volume resistance R V plus and I S is nothing but volume uh, this voltage divided by the surface resistance. Okay, these two surface resistances here and here. So, you can write it like this. If you have two surfaces, you can write them like this or you can write them as a common uh, surface resistance. So, these two together is R s. Okay. So, this is I s, this is I v and now this current surface current gets bypassed. This wire, this wire we call as a guard wire which lets this surface current bypass through a uh, conduct uh, I mean easier path than this surface. So, they will not flow the through the ammeter. So, the ammeter reading now will give So, the ammeter reading gives I V only. Okay. Now, if we disconnect the uh, this guard wires, okay, suppose we have we can disconnect it say suppose uh, there are switches. So, that we can disconnect this here also we can have a switch. So, that this is discon we can disconnect it. So, if we disconnect it then the ammeter will give both I s and I v if we disconnect the guard wire. Okay, and ammeter reading gives I V only if uh, guard wire is present. So, therefore, now what we can do? Suppose, so we go back to the previous question, uh, we need to estimate the resistance for a 1 kilometer long cable, but we are doing the experiment with uh, 10 meter cable. So, how can we estimate the result for 1 kilometer cable? So, now say uh, when we have 10 meter cable, okay, we can measure I V using guard wire. And then 
measure i s plus i v with after, uh, after removing the guard wire. So, without the guard wire ok call this i and then we can find the value of i s like this. So, i is known this i v is known as given by this ammeter ok we uh, with the when the guard wire is present or not present. So, from this we can find the i s then we can predict the result for 1 kilometer long cable as so this is is uh, so this is is 10 meter is 10 iv 10 10 meter 10 meter and this is i 10 experiment for 10 meter ok. So, then we can predict the result for 1 kilometer cable as i s uh, 1000 will be almost same as i s 10 ok and i v 1000 will be 100 times i v 10 ok. So, and i 1000 will be i s 1000 plus i v 1000. So, we can predict the current that would have been flown in an 1 kilometer long cable more accurately considering this surface uh, resistance or surface conductances conductance. Uh, if we did not do that uh, our result would have been uh, erroneous ok. So, this is the important thing I wanted to convey to you is the fact that uh, while measuring a high resistance uh, the parallel path that means the surface resistance comes in picture and if we do not consider that if we do not take care of that our estimations can be wrong ok. Uh, so, uh, thank you.